And then you go on to describe that one of the most alkalizing foods is a lemon, and yet it's extremely acidic, what you just talked about before. But I thought that was kind of a turning the tables on what was my current understanding of why people should buy alkalizing and ionic water machines. I know it's a sensitive issue because a lot of people and companies are already invested in this. But as you said, which I really like the way you said it, it's an incomplete understanding. Hopefully I haven't offended anybody here, but pursuit of new knowledge requires some bold moves. You speak about physioelectric charges, and I want to better understand what you meant by that in the book. Do you mind explaining that? Piezoelectricity is a very gentle form of electricity. We think of electricity in terms of something that will turn on the lights in our house and we use pretty strong electricity for that. But nature uses these very gentle currents that run your body and mine, as well as are involved in everything that goes on in this planet. Extremely gentle currents, and that's piezoelectricity. It's what makes a quartz crystal so unique and used in the uh, computer world. All you have to do is hold a piece of quartz to create this gentle piezoelectric current in a crystal. It's what allows a quartz watch to maintain its time so accurately because a little bit of pressure on a quartz chip or a quartz crystal creates this exact frequency that a watch can be timed with. So we're talking about very, very gentle current because when you pick up a crystal, you've actually initiated a piezoelectric charge in it, but you don't see sparks coming off of it. It's extremely gentle. Those are the kinds of forces that are used in your body to conduct signals and whatnot, and we're creating that kind of current and using it in water. But we don't want huge voltages going through water because that is disruptive. But the mention of it was important because of what? Because when nature gathers all of these forces together, we've talked a little bit about the importance of water being able to move and that she always moves in a spiraling fashion. One of the other factors in creating the structure of water is these gentle currents. Electromagnetic currents are also involved in the structuring of water. Water moves. Even the movement will create some piezoelectric forces. But nature's minerals, quartz especially, generates piezoelectricity in the earth. So in the earth, there are telluric currents going on all the time, just like in your body. And these are important for helping water naturally maintain structure on the planet. And so that's why the discussion here, because we would rather see water structured with gentle piezoelectric currents and magnetic fields. That's how the Earth does it. Very interesting. I was very excited to read about how you translated hydration as getting enough hydrogen. It's so profound, I want you to talk more about that, because when I read that John O'Neill, the Australian decathlon champion, improved his endurance by supplying hydrogen in the form of huge doses of CoQ10, I thought that was fascinating. I know there's other ways to do that, but I want you to talk about that, because that seems like new knowledge verified to me. There are a couple of other scientists that are looking at alternate energy pathways. All right, and that phrase might get somebody some interesting information on the Internet. This is a place I'd like to go a little bit deeper. We know this, as you say, is new information, and most of the world would go, what? But John O'Neill's book, which is not widely available, just happened to come to us during the... (laughs) just happened to come to us. There are no accidents during the research for this book, and it really blew us away because it opened the door for this understanding of an alternate energy pathway. We talk about hydrogen as being a clean fuel alternative to fossil fuels on this planet, and it, it is. The only byproduct of burning hydrogen is water. Well, in the human body, the same is possible. And, you know, our research showed that the environment on this planet used to be very hydrogen rich. We didn't say this in the book, but we wonder whether or not that's why life forms on this planet used to be so huge. Oh, that's interesting. An interesting theory, anyway. Will I grow tall if I have hydrogen-rich water? (laughs) You know, it would be an interesting thing to pursue, but there are scientists who are looking at alternate energy pathways, and you know what? They're about hydrogen. 
They're about looking at hydrogen. So, yes, we're on to something, we believe, and we'd love people to take it from there. You know, part of what we did with the book was put it out there and say, take it from here. It's such an exciting book. Can you talk a little bit more about what John did? Aside from he took the huge CoQ10 doses, something happened to his performance that was quite unique. He had a cycle, a bicycle, I guess, I'm, I'm assuming, like contraption, where you can monitor, I mean, it'll track the effort that you're putting out. I don't know too much about exercise equipment, but he had a piece of equipment. It was a cycling equipment, and he was monitoring his effort and respiration and all of these other things that he had the capacity to monitor. And he noticed doing several things together. Oh, I'm drawing on my memory now here, but he used CoQ10 as a source of hydrogen. He wasn't talking about water here. He had no idea there, but he was enriching his body with CoQ10 and doing some very specific exercises. And and he came to this point where after about 45 minutes to an hour of vigorous exercise, which, you know, most people can't get past, he entered what he called this hydrogen efficiency zone. And all of a sudden, his heart rate went down. He quit perspiring And he was able to just breeze through the same amount of output on this cycle, but without any effort and no fatigue. And there was no lactic acid built up at the end. We were just totally intrigued by this whole thing. Is he still alive? I'm not even sure. There was no way to contact him. It was one of these self-published books, we assumed. He documented his work very nicely. It just absolutely made sense. Now, there's other ways, other than huge amounts of CoQ10 now, to create a hydrogen-rich water environment. Can you talk about it? Well, one of the things we talk about in the book and tell people how to do is how to make hydrogen-rich water. Oh, I can't go into this in great detail, but there is evidence that taking in hydrogen-rich water, and there are some companies that have some products that are enriching hydrogen in different ways, and there is a certain amount of evidence. It's empirical at this time, okay? It's not documented scientifically with equipment, but athletes are saying, ah, I get to this point where it's easy, it's effortless, and I don't have the lactic acid buildup that I used to. And so, you know, it's starting to surface some validation for this whole concept. But yes, we tell people how to enrich their water with hydrogen, and there are a number of ways and a number of products out there that will help do that. It was Dr. Hayashi, who you mentioned earlier, who was the the Japanese cardiologist who did all the initial research on ionized water. But what he came to find out was that it wasn't the alkalinity in the water, it wasn't the ORP in the water, it was the hydrogen in the water that made the difference. And he doesn't support ionizers anymore. You won't necessarily find that because all of his original work is what's quoted by the ionizer companies selling their ionizers. This is the evolution of how we discover things. He used ionized water therapeutically for a period of time, and he's a cardiologist, and there are also some studies coming out of Japan now that show, at least in mice, that drinking alkaline water long-term can cause heart problems. So, you know, it's just beginning to surface, and uh, there's not a plethora of information here yet, but it's the hydrogen in the water that was doing all the positive things. I'm after the hydrogen in the water, not the ionized water. The last quarter of your book, you talk about literally how to structure the water, and people have a lot of different choices. One of the greatest concerns I still have is cleaning the initial water that you're then going to structure and refine. And I know that in the book you say, look, there's so many things added to the water from pharmaceuticals to chemicals and pollutants that are in soils to fertilizers that it's getting harder and harder to clean, isn't it? Yes, it really is a problem. I mean, you know, we wanted to be able to tell people here's what to do, but we ultimately had to conclude we can't because every water supply is different and every water supply has got its own unique problems. And the way we handled that in the book was just, you know, a brief statement that says part of the dance with water is getting to know your water. And so you've got to do whatever it is to find out what your water needs in order to be able to be cleaned up. There are all kinds of filters that will take this and that out of the water. And every 